So if you saw my last tying video, you saw I was trying to replicate a fly that was inside this box right here. I want to talk more about this box because I have a lot more info. But just to, just to recap what this box is and where I got it. I got it in an old antique shop hmm, maybe four or five years ago. I saw it just sitting there in like the sporting goods area. And I immediately said, I'm going to buy this thing. But um, when I opened it up, I, I realized that it like was actually something a little bit special. It wasn't just like a book with, you know, that you keep your flies in. Um, I opened it up and you can see there's two snaps right here. And there are these sleeves that you keep your wet flies in. See that? You can you put the name on them. And if you look here close, you can see the name. The company is Common Sense. It's an American company. If you look at the patent here, it says May of 1923. And you would put all your wet flies in here and you know they'd have the leader attached to them, like that Mary Overs one I tied recently. And also there was a little drying area. Where is that little drying area right in the middle? So you can hook a fly into this this felt area and let it dry. But then beyond that, beyond, beyond those two things, there's also a little actually there's a little sleeve right here too. But beyond that, there was this box. And I was like, wow, look at this. It also comes with a dry fly part. So it's a wet fly and a dry fly box. And when I opened it up, I saw that there were still flies in it. You can see that. And the flies aren't used. All the mallard wings are intact. And I was like, wow, this is really uh, something amazing. Um, and, and, and the more I looked at the, the, this whole book, I realized that none of this has been used. This, th these wet fly pouches right here, there's no like material broken off in any of them. Like you'd see uh, maybe a piece of deer hair or some dubbing or a hackle. There's nothing in any of these. There was never any flies in any of these, but there also wasn't any material. Like what would happen if you you know, if you kept flies in here for a while, something would pop off of it, and you'd see it in there. There's nothing in there. And um, then I started looking at this box a little more closely, and I realized it's a pretty special box. If you, if I mean, you think about the age of this, it's a spring-loaded top, like a Wheatley box. And um, the name here on here too. Let's see what that says. It says it says the improved common sense dry fly box. And so I did some research, um, and he, here's what I've come up with. This, made in America, it was made to compete with Wheatley. This whole, this whole case right here was made to compete with Wheatley. And this particular one, the one that says improved, this is the Cadillac of fly books. This is it. As far as the top, this is the top of the line in the U.S. at that particular time, which was the 20s and 30s, and probably into the 40s. This was the top of the line, and it was a little bit cheaper than Wheatley, uh, but it was still extremely expensive. I found an ad, a wholesale ad, that if you bought a dozen of these, they would cost about eight bucks each. That's wholesale prices. And nowadays, you take wholesale and you double it. As that's retail. I don't know what they did back then, but let's say it was $16. That's double. That's like $275 in today's money. So maybe back then they didn't double it. I don't know. But it's got to be between $200 and $275. Imagine paying $275 for a, a, a fly book. I mean, this is... You'd have to be making some serious dough. <laughs> Who knows what you were doing? Maybe uh, I don't know what you were doing. You're probably in the. You're probably recovering from the uh, 
the stock market collapse, you bought everything low, <laughs> and now you're, you're rolling in dough and you're going to buy a $275 box that you're never going to use because this thing is brand new and you're going to put flies in it and those flies are never going to be used. So you just buy this thing. You're, you're, <laughs> you're just looking to spend money. Something else that's interesting about this that I found is, is that, see this spot right here? See that opening? A pair of tweezers are supposed to go in there. Right? You were supposed to put your tweezers in there. And then that's what you would use. You'd take out the tweezers and you'd reach into one of these little holes right here and you'd grab your fly. Nowadays, no company would be dumb enough to, you know, make you, give you tweezers. Because you'd lose that in a second. Back in the day, a gentleman wouldn't lose his tweezers. I mean, these things would be in there, who knows? I mean, he'd always have them. Um, but nowadays, you'd be out of your mind. To, to put tweezers in there. Um, but yeah, so that, that's what I found with this box. It's definitely the, I mean, the upper, upper, upper echelon of, of, of gear at the time. I'm gonna take some of these flies out and show you them because um, they're really cool. I'm gonna use my tweezers. Um, the first one that I wanted to talk about was this one. These are some of the ones that I really, I don't, I don't know what they are. Let me zoom you in a little bit here. Right. Here's the first one that I noticed that was really interesting. This wet fly right here. This is some sort of pheasant. I think um, I was talking with some people, I talked to John about this. You know, just a picture over a, over a phone, he mentioned hen pheasant. It does. Um, I said pheasant, he said hen pheasant, so I, it makes a lot of sense that this is a pheasant. It's a big, it's a big feather. You got um, you got a tip of tail, very sparse. This is another really interesting thing. All these flies are very sparse in the tail, and then and then there's another big hackle right here, and it's a and it's a um, peacock body. Really cool fly. There's only one of these. This is the one that I tied, that I don't know the name of. I don't know the name of that other one either. Um, if you want to see me tie this fly, you can look back at the previous video. But a, a, a really incredible fly. Wing is still perfect. Been sitting in this box for, I mean, somewhere between 75 and 85 years, maybe. Maybe maybe 65 to 90 years. I mean, who really knows exactly. And something interesting also is, is that, see these, these flies? The heads are tied right to the eye. That's an, that's an important part to this, and I'll explain in a minute. The next one I want to talk about, this. This is like the coolest fly. Eh, I think it's the coolest fly in here because I like deer hair. There's two of these. And it's, it's spun deer hair. There's a deer hair head that's really packed tight. It's cut off at the bottom, and then it's split here. Now, how did they split it? Well, all they did was cut the center out. That's it. All they did was cut the center out, and now they have a split wing. And it's got a deer hair tail. It's a, this is a really, really cool fly, and it's one of the things that make me think this is a box or it was bought in the 40s. And the reason I say that is because this is a very new style fly with this head like that. Um... I mean, if you think back to the Muddler Minnow, the Muddler Minnow is an old fly, but it's not 1800s old. There, Don Gateman. You see the heads? They're not packed tight, those heads. They're, they're left long. That's, that's important for the time, for, you know, for the timeline, if we're trying to figure out how old the box is, because we assume that the person went in bought the box brand new and bought the flies at the same time because the box, is, the box hasn't been used and the flies haven't been used. There's a bunch of wet flies too that I thought were cool. Like this one here, look at this. Now this looks like a... Let me put my, my hand behind it. It's tough to tell because I got a dark shirt on, but 
That is a red body with a with a black rib. It's like a, it's a queen of waters, I think, but the color of the body isn't really queen of waters style. Um, it's a little bit darker. I just lightened up the screen. It's a little it's a little bit darker, but everything else is queen of waters. So I'm thinking it's just queen of waters. But it looks it looks awesome. You can see the wings still perfectly intact. This is a great fly. I loved queen of waters. Here's one that I uh, that I didn't even notice until John pointed it out. It's a real small fly, but it's got a a quill body. How cool is that? A quill body. I don't know. I mean, there's not too many flies out there with a quill body because they were so delicate. I mean, obviously the one, you know, we know about the most, Quill Gordon. I mean, that's, that's, and that's a very old fly. So they've been doing Quill bodies for a while, but there's not many of them out there. This is, this is definitely cool. And another one is, is this one here. This is more of your typical style dry fly. Uh, with a mallard wing because they're upright. See that? The body is a hare's ear and it has a rib on it. And again, if you look, the tail, extremely sparse. There's only, I mean, there's exactly three fibers in here. So they tied, they tied the tails sparse. But, I mean, if you look at this, tail extremely sparse extremely heavy, heavy, heavy hackle. All right, here's the one that I, that, that I want to talk about. This helped me understand a lot more about this box and where it came from. This right here is a March Brown. You can see the size of it. You can see the color. It's a March Brown. It's, it's very unique though, because it, you never see a March Brown like this. This is all soft tackle here. And even the wing, this is not Mallard. This is a soft tackle wing. So the entire thing is soft tackle. Even the tail is soft tackle. The body is like a hare's ear and it has a rib on it. And the rib is black. Now I'm not sure if the rib is always black. But in right now, it's black. It's a big fly, and it's on an offset hook. An offset meaning it's, it's, it looks like it's bent. It's hard to tell, but it's, a, it's an offset hook. And while I was doing research for this fly right here, I came across something that made it all click. So, I was looking in, the book I was looking in, not the Founding Flies book, I was looking in this one, Italian Catskill Style Dry Flies. This is another valid book. This is my favorite book. The stories in here are incredible. Um, I was looking for that fly and I came across this picture right here. See that? And, and the little caption here says, above, early March Browns circa 1920s from William Mills and Son in New York City. This is these those flies are from Mike's collection. The early versions of the March Brown were darker reflecting the patterns of British heritage. Now all soft tackle. You see that? All soft tackle. The tail is soft tackle. The wing is a soft tackle. Everything's soft tackle here. And I was looking at these these hooks very closely. It's tough to tell, but in these hooks are a round wire. A round wire. And if you if you watched my last video where I tied that, that dry fly, I mentioned that I thought maybe they were using mustads. But now that I looked closer at this one, and then I looked closer at this March Brown that I had on this offset hook. This is a round wire. It's not a flap. If you look at a mustad hook, 
it, it's, it has flat sides, all right? Um, John was mentioning that they call it forged, and essentially they thought that it was stronger because it was, it was the edges were like more squared, not round like this. John thinks this is an all cock hook, not a, not a, a, uh, a mustad. And, and um, it makes a lot of sense because of the round wire. So William Mills and Son are, is where those flies are from in New York City. Now, I said to myself, well, this fly really looks like that. I mean, really, really looks like that, without a doubt. I sent the picture to John, he sent it to Mike, um, and another guy named Ted Patlin, and they confirmed that this is, without a doubt, a Williams and Mills and Son, William Mills and Son fly, which is really cool. Now, this last fly I want to show you is it, it kind of, and I, I mean, just hearing that information and seeing the pictures definitely sealed it as far as it's a, it's a William Mills and Son fly. But finding this fly in the box too, for sure, made me think that the person got it, got the box and the flies in in New York City. Now. You're probably going to see a big difference here between this fly and the rest of them. <laughs> the first thing is, is that this one's been fished, right? And the next thing is, if we peel back this hackle, that head is Catskill, Catskill style right there. It, there's an exposed part of the shank in the front. None of these other flies are tied like that. They're all tied right to the eye. This one... This particular one was not sold at William Mills and Son, for sure. This was sold by somebody up in the Catskills back during this time because of the way that shank is. So the person that bought this stuff fished in the Catskills, for sure. And they were probably some rich dude that went up there uh, whenever he wanted to. And, and chucked, uh, chucked dry flies for trout. Probably in the same rivers that I fish now. It's probably the Delaware, the Beaver Kill, the Willow. But, um, but I think this really sealed it. I don't know why this fly was in there. Some, he, this guy probably just had this fly, or maybe it was on his rod or something, and he clipped it off and, and dropped it in there, or something. Who knows why? This one fly was in there um, with the tippet still attached like this. Um, who knows? Um, it's got no wing on it. It's just hackle. It's just hackle. It's tied on mm, a modern day 12. This is That's what this is. So it was probably back then. It's, I mean, this thing's probably a 10. I would say, I bet you this is a March Brown. I bet you that's what this is. It, it, it makes sense. It's the hackle's big. The hook is big. Um, that's what I think it is. I mean, nowadays we tie it a little bit bigger, but I think that's what this is. Really cool. I have no idea who tied this. I mean, I could probably show it to some people and maybe, maybe they'll know, but... It's tied by one of the older Catskill guys. That's that's all I know for sure. Um, all right, so that's what I have. That's the info I have. William Mills and Son. Somebody went in the, into that shop in New York City, bought this box, box of, bought all the flies, made some salesman's day. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed looking at this this um, this book and these flies and you know, a little bit of that the history. Uh, definitely pick up, if you haven't already, definitely pick up Tying Catskill Style Dry Flies by Vala. This book, I mean, you, you read this book, it's incredible. Uh, you'll learn so much 
You will learn so much. The stories are awesome. It's not just like, it says tying Catskill style draw. And yeah, you can learn how to tie, but you know what? Like, this is more about the stories and about the history behind the fly. This is an incredible book. Yeah, I mean, it's going to cost you a couple bucks, but um, it's worth it, without a doubt, if you have any interest in, in dry flies. And then this book, The Founding Flies, which I've talked about on, um, on the channel before, but this one is, 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 is really good, too. There's two books. He has two books that... Uh, let me give you a zoomed-out version. There's two books that, that have this sort of name. One is this one, The Founding Flies. This is like 43 Masters. The other one is Tying the Founding Flies. Uh, they're both good. But this is a lot bigger of a book. So, then this has all the history. Um, uh, 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 all, all, the, all the stories behind the flies, the people that came up with them, like we were talking before about Don Gapin and, and how he came up with the Muddler Minnows. It's, 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 it's a cool book. And I think that's... I mean, personally, that's what I think Vala is great at, is, is exp you know, explaining the history behind stuff, for sure. And so, uh, this is the one that I tied in that, that other video. That's the Grasshopper. The Mary Oaks Grasshopper. I can link to that video at the top. But, um, but yeah, so pick up those two books if you can, if you don't have them, for sure. They're great. And I'll talk to you uh, soon. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna tie some more of these, uh, these flies from this book. It's a lot of cool. That that March Brown, that deer hair one, that um, this one right here. The um, uh, the pheasant one. I want to tie that too. That is a cool fly. All right. Thanks, everyone.